Hi there. Um, really good to be with you um, right now. Um, we are doing a little bit of thinking through what reaching out or um, thinking through actually how we connect with children and young people in this season might look like. Um, and we're really excited to have Chris Thompson with us um, who works for Youth for Christ. He'll introduce himself a bit more in a minute. Um, and Catherine Hart who works for Home Missions and has a few other roles as well. Um, so we're going to have a little bit of a conversation um, and look at five questions um, when we're considering and thinking about what it means to reach out and to look beyond our church walls at the moment um, and for post-COVID as well. So Chris, do you want to say hello, introduce yourself, let us know who you are? Great, yes, my name is Chris, work for Youth for Christ. Uh, I have two kids and one wife, if that's of interest. Um, at YFC, we are really passionate about young people on the margins, so these young people here are way outside the church walls, potentially have no interest or have no contact at all with, with faith and with Jesus, and uh, we invite them into that. That's what we do. Amazing, thank you, Chris. And Catherine? Yeah, I'm Catherine, and I work for um, the Methodist Home Mission Department at I have um, I'm married with four four boys. I'm also married to a minister, um, so I get to experience that aspect of things as well. And I suppose I'm just um, I'm passionate about how we how we connect with people outside of church and how we build real meaningful relationships in there. Mm. Amazing. And I'm Leanne, for those who uh, don't may, know me, and I am married with two small girls, and I am the Training and Development Officer with the Irish Methodist Youth and Children's Department. So yeah, it's really good um, to be having these conversations. Um, so thank you guys for joining us. Um, so the first in our little series of questions, the first question to talk through, how do we build relationships with young people and children, maybe especially in this season when we can't do our normal programme? So, Chris, I'm going to come to you first. Uh, great. I, I probably think this isn't rocket science, Leanne. Um, it's quite simple. It's not easy, mm -hmm. uh, but it's simple. Um, I think there's really exciting chance for us now to, to remember that youth work, good youth work is about relationships, and good relationships are about time. So if you want to get to know somebody better, you spend time with them. If you want to get to know somebody deeply, it's about time. Uh, and so rethinking how am I going to spend time with my young people. Uh, programs are never actually that good for that um, because we're so busy running the program. But uh, making a list, we've been encouraging some of our guys to make a list of the young people that you, you know really well. How am I going to spend time with that person? Yeah. How am I going to spend time with those three people? There's a family, four kids, how am I going to spend time with them? Uh, and simply finding connecting points. So bring a football to the park with three guys and kick it about. Um, get online and play FIFA or get them into your, your hall and three other guys and have a FIFA, few FIFA matches, um, you know, get a hot chocolate at the cafe when they open again and and just spend time, get your infrared nail um, thingy with you out and uh, start doing nails together. Whatever it is that connects you to young people and allows you to spend time with them, um, just start doing that in ones and in twos and threes and fours. And again, that's, that's really simple. Um, there's very little COVID related stuff around that. Um, there's, you know, it's really easy. Sorry, it's not easy, it's very simple. <laughs> right. Yeah, and what about for you, Catherine? Yeah, I think it, it, it's part of it here is a, is a word of, is a word of caution or that when, I think when times are difficult, it can be, it can be very easy to get caught up in, in detail and program and you know to take lots of time planning what you can do with your your young people at the moment in terms of program um, but sometimes that can happen at the expense of connection um, so it's really being intentional and saying um, how am I going to get a balance in in this season between between having you know between having program that keeps my my young people connected whether it's online or when the regulations allow meeting in person and between um, having those those real relationships where we get to know young people a little bit deeper, where we get the time for for the one to one conversation, and sometimes that does mean um, it does mean making the decision to to not run as much program as we are doing, so that we have time for that meaningful connection. Yeah, there's a danger, isn't there, that we can 
we maybe have maybe in church culture become very heavily reliant on program um, and that's what we base things off but actually when that's stripped away I think sometimes maybe we've forgot even the art of just conversation and building relationship with young people um, or with families and children so actually looking for those things that actually even help us in conversation you know common ground what has been going on that isn't COVID what else can we talk about you know um, but actually again as you guys have mentioned that relationship and looking for those moments of connection so that if that is getting your three young people that I'm going to connect with this week and if that's just a regular encouragement of a bible verse or a song even if those young people don't always respond actually just letting them know that you're there and that you're continually um being a presence in their life I think is really important in the season isn't it yeah and the exciting thing about those the small connections and the the, the simple just being in proximity to young people mm-hmm. you can obviously sit down open the bible with people and be really really intentional in that and and that's amazing uh, and again restrictions that do allow for you to meet one or two young people and do that mm-hmm. um, but equally all of those things can be really intentional discipleship opportunities even if you don't open the bible so mm-hmm. you know a round of golf with three young guys that, that love golf that's three or four hours of just being present with them and mm-hmm. again learn relearning maybe the art of conversation the art of asking a few good questions about where god's been what do you think you know where was he in covid what's he doing now where does he see yourself in the future with him you know we question the other to tee up a good conversation you don't need a bible there um to necessarily bring people on a wee bit of a discipleship journey brilliant thank you great we'll keep going will we (laughs) okay um question two then guys um so how do we begin to engage with young people or children maybe who have never engaged in any kind of programs before and that maybe have never been part of all the church stuff that we do so yeah really looking out beyond our church walls how do we engage those people (laughs) Chris, <laughs> I'll start with you again. <laughs> I was waiting for you to invite me. Um, <laughs> I think there's, there's lots of different ways, and I know some of the some of the later um, videos will, will go into a bit more depth in this. I think when you when you start thinking about connecting points with two or three young people and how you're going to get yourself in proximity with them, those are really easy invite points for somebody. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do crafts or makeup with a couple of young girls. Actually, they can bring a friend to that, and all of a sudden you're starting to multiply out your your borders a little bit. Um, but I think too, if you want to think actively about directly engaging young people, um, there's some really difficult things around that, um, and some ways that makes that quite hard. But a really simple example is is to be present at the bus stop. And so, if you're in a town where you you know you see young people get off the bus, step out there. Maybe wear a lanyard that labels yourself as, as a youth worker in the town. Get yourself some food. Maybe it was donuts pre-COVID. Maybe it's like packets of biscuits or Jaffa cakes in a box, whatever it is now. Just start giving food out. Um, you'll see your own young people. So there's a wee bit of a connecting point there. You'll see other young people you don't know. And, and I think if you, if you were to do that consistently over the autumn, actually when programs kick off again, I think you'd find yourself knowing maybe twice or three times as many young people in your town um, by just simply being consistently present once or twice a week at the bus stop, Yeah. for example. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, and I know certainly we've been talking as well, even in work, about the opportunity that Advent even presents as well in all of this for maybe especially with children and families as well. Um, actually, those moments were maybe the school nativity isn't happening in the same way or the nativity in church or the carol service. Um, But actually, what are the ways then that you can engage with children and young people and families in this season? So some of our churches I know are doing like a Christmas trail where there's going to be displays um, in gardens that people can go and look at. Um, But actually, are there ways, are there things that we can do even in this season, you know, with their natural kind of invitations again, like you've been talking about Chris, um, that we can actually, again, just connect with people, maybe that we wouldn't normally connect with. So, yeah. What about for you, Catherine? Anything that you would add? Yeah, I think just related to what you were saying, Liam, we have been thinking, um, you know, even as even as a family with the, you know, the, the people that, that we connect with who maybe aren't part of our, our church community or their, or their Advent practices that we can invite people to be part of. Because I, I think one of the things that, 
that you find is that people are are warm in a season like Advent to connection because they're even though there may be lots of families that aren't part of part of church anymore or children and young people who aren't part of church anymore there's still a, a little bit of a memory um for us that that this is a special time of the year and this is a time of the year when we connect so it's really just thinking are there you know are there practices so we have been thinking should we should we do something around our dinner table once a week but invite our parent and toddler group and our our um primary school aged youth club families to be part of that and it might just be that one or two other families um chooses to join in um but that it opens up it opens up a way of connection that maybe wouldn't have happened in in the middle of february um because there's something about the seasons that people connect with yeah yeah and i think there's something even in connecting with local schools like the places where our children and young people are actually being able to connect with the local school and say how can we serve you in this season of advent you know what is it you're doing can our church do anything for you maybe it is bringing sweets to the teachers to say look we're praying for you um but actually it is just looking for those little ends isn't it um where actually you just get to connect with people and look beyond our own church building and people within but to look out so yeah, there's some great things in there and being aware of just what's going on, I think, in the community and the needs in the community and um, making yourself more aware of that stuff, I think, certainly then create some of that connection that we've already talked about. Yeah. Amazing. OK, <laughs> number three. So um, we have loads of young people um, or children that hang around our church, maybe in the local park or in the car park. What can we do? <laughs> now you're looking to see who I'm going to come to first again. <laughs> I'm going to come to you again, Chris. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <clears throat> great question. Um, like a common scenario that, that appears in my experience. Um, I guess before I even would want to ask about what you might do, I would always try and ask the question in a scenario, why do you want to do anything? Um, do you just want to get the young people off your car park because they're littering or they're noisy for the neighbours? Frankly, I would just call the police then and I'm done with it and, and forget about that. Um, do you want them to, do you feel like this group of 10 young people are going to save your church because they're fresh, a fresh generation? That might happen uh, and we pray that that would happen, but I, I think that's too much of a burden to put on a group of young people outside your church car park. Uh, and so instead maybe to ask the question are you viewing this young this group of young people as young people who need jesus young people here on the margins that jesus would have loved that he would have gone straight to um had uh, if we read the jesus way of the gospels he would be right there and if that's the heart uh, to start meeting their needs and to introduce them to jesus then i would say amazing and go for it and don't don't let fear get in the way of that yeah. uh, but always just try and make sure that your motives um, and your heart and your priorities are aligned a little bit in that before you start. Um, I, when it comes to the processes, um, it, again, it isn't rocket science. It's quite hard. Um, it's very hard to approach, you know, a crowd of young people. For, for most people, that's a real, there's a real fear barrier to that. Um, but hopefully for a youth worker and maybe some, some particular people in the congregation, that, that isn't um, something that's too scary. But it's simple. You, make an approach, you get their names, again, bring some food with you, um, that's helpful. Uh, know names, remember names, find out what they're doing, why are they there, are they nothing else to do, what kind of stuff's going on in their life, uh, is there anything we can do for you? Do you need a dry place to go? Well, maybe post-COVID we could think about providing something like that. Um, actually, I can bring a gazebo down next week, and we can hang out for half an hour before you move on somewhere else. Uh, and we'll get the hot chocolate flasks. You know, we things like that that show in a very simple way that you actually care about these people yeah. and that you really value them and concerned about them. And then you're consistent because you're there again next week and you know their name and you're asking about what what's happening at home because you you heard something last week. Yeah. Uh, and you're just showing them. Some of these young people will have no one else in their life that is doing that, that is showing them real care. Yeah. They mightn't have it at home, they mightn't have it in school. Um, I think then as as the church, we are really excited an opportunity to, to do that differently. 
um, and you can quite quickly say that you're Christians and, and you're from the local church and that can be enough as a starting point. Um, I find that the question quite often comes around to, to why you're doing it, especially mm-hmm. if it's wet. Um, and as you mentioned before, Leanne, the opportunity to, can I pray for that for you? Yeah. is a really simple way of verbalizing your faith. Um, and I've never heard anybody, almost never heard anybody refuse yeah. you know, the opportunity to be prayed for. Um, <clears throat> so there's lots of really simple ways. Again, it's not yeah. easy, um, mm-hmm. but it's simple. And certainly if you gather the right people behind you in terms of your church leadership and, and a couple of committed volunteers, then then you can start small and you can yeah. see it really go somewhere. Amazing, yeah. And I know when we've talked before, Chris, as well, actually, we've talked around actually seeing that group of young people as a gift. <laughs> um, young people who are right on your doorstep, who are right there. So it's not a matter that you have to go and look for the young people. Like, where are we going to get young people to come to? But actually, there are a group of young people who are hanging around right outside your building. So actually, yeah. even seeing them as a gift and actually, okay, God, you have placed these young people, these children right on our doorstep. So how do you want us to engage with them? How do you want us to introduce them to you to help them take a step closer to you? Um, So actually, it's not that they're a nuisance, um, but actually that shift in even how we see that group of young people and then even in how we talk about them is Mm -hmm. huge, isn't it? Um, So there's a real challenge, I think, in yeah in that for us as well. it's an exciting opportunity then to bring others with you. So if that language of nuisance, if that language of problem and issue is what you're hearing, if you're a youth worker or a volunteer, if that's what you're hearing from others in church, yeah, it's a hard, that's a hard task. That you're trying to change a little bit of the culture there, but again, if you've got the leadership with you in that, yeah. just speak in a different a different way about them, yeah, about opportunity, about what a privilege, yeah, to, to do that. Um, yeah, that's quite exciting. Yeah, yeah, and Catherine, we talked a little bit about around our priorities and things as well, and you had mentioned, um, even around actually, are we just there to love them like Jesus did yeah yeah Yeah, absolutely I think um when we sometimes when we think about connecting with a group of young people we we can overthink it and we can we can go out with this so we're going to connect with this group of young people and then hopefully they'll come to this program and they'll come to this program and we'll get them to this point um but actually our priority and our starting point is to is to offer them the love um love that comes from Jesus um, and that actually that's that's our starting point it's introducing them to Jesus it's not yes we want them to we want them to um, encounter our church family and our church community in some way but first and foremost we want them to encounter Jesus and then we want out of those relationships that we have with them um, to see what happens next and we actually don't need to know what happens next um because if we're walking if we're walking with jesus through all of this um as we get to know them those next steps will become clear brilliant great thanks guys okay number four and uh, so this is a maybe a deeper one for us to think a little bit about um so what is the relationship between discipleship and mission and how do they work together so I'm going to come to Catherine first. <laughs> Give you oh, a break. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose when we're when we're thinking about discipleship and and mission, um, for every for everyone who is a disciple or who is a follower of of Jesus, discipleship and mission go hand in hand. Um, we tend to, or we have tended to, in church life, to to put discipleship and mission into two very separate compartments if you want to call them that but actually um when we look at when we look at the at the gospels when we look at the way that jesus um called his called his disciples um they really went hand in hand right from the beginning of that call on the disciples life like life so when jesus called the disciples come and follow me and I will make you fishers of, me- of people. Um, so there was that immediate follow me and you'll fish fish for people. But we do tend to have, have that separation. Um, and I suppose when we think about working as youth workers, um, mission and discipleship is very much, go very much hand in hand and we need to be engaged in both of those. Um, but also um, when we when we connect with young people, 
um, when we connect with young people at the front of our church or at the bus stop, it's actually the start. That is also discipleship. <laughs> um, it's the start of a process of discipleship for those young people. Um, as soon as they encounter um, someone who's bringing the love of Jesus to them. Yeah. 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 And that whole idea that actually it's not just once they make a commitment of faith or when they are saved and um, that actually they become a disciple and it's all missional before that. Um, mm -hmm. So actually, again, how I think we approach that even. So seeing that from the moment that actually we are encountering them, that is the start of them on a journey, stepping mm -hmm. closer to Jesus. So actually, what is our role within that um, as we help them on that journey? Yeah. So yeah, there's a little shift I, again within that, I think that does change our perspective. Chris? Yeah, and, and even probably in YFC, we would say actually the discipleship journey starts before you even meet the young person because huh. the Lord's Spirit is, mm -hmm. is there. Absolutely. And, um, yeah. and we're only joining in with what he's already doing. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly during lockdown, we felt that real, we had to, you know, had to step back a little bit and we had to give those young people to the Lord and yeah. say, right, God, you, you be busy working yeah. in, in our absence. Um, so it, it starts way, way back here. And we've certainly found way before a young person makes the commitment to follow Jesus, <clears throat> we can we have this amazing opportunity to expose them to, mm -hmm. to worship, to prayer, to scripture, um, to a really safe community of, of Christian love and value and worth. Um, to be prayed for, even just opportunities to serve way before they're mm -hmm. in love with Jesus. Um, yeah. and that is discipleship, but they're not, they haven't discovered, they haven't encountered Jesus um, and committed to him yet. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's this amazing journey where in the middle of it, they make a commitment to follow him. Mm -hmm. and start, you know, there's pre-discipleship almost or missional, the missional half of it, if you want to think of it like that. And then there's this, then learning what that means to follow him into maturity. Um, and if we lose, I think if we lose either of those, then we lose out. And, and even for youth workers in a church, if our church-based programs are, aren't, don't have a missional edge to them, then we don't, then we're losing out. And our young people are losing out because they're being shaped in a way that doesn't value mission and they don't think, of, they don't think missionally. And equally, if our mission doesn't, includes elements of scripture and prayer and, and, and worship then I think we're losing out in our mission or doing people a disservice on that side. So yeah. I think there's real risk then that we lose we lose stuff on both sides. Um and I if I can be bold, I've been bold to you before they am, but <laughs> I kind of think whenever we see the need that there is in a generation of young people who don't know Jesus, who's on our doorsteps, I'm not sure we can excuse anymore having youth workers who are purely spending their full time within the walls of a church um i i just don't think if we're serious about seeing a generation reach for jesus i don't think we can do that i'm not yeah. sure how to justify that um and actually if we have the amazing if we have the privilege of having the resources to have a youth worker uh, i think it it might be a bit of a scandal that that they don't have at least a little bit of their time devoted to thinking creatively about discipleship and mission <laughs> outside the walls of their church um and that can be hard. There's loads of reasons why that doesn't happen. But I think if we're serious about seeing people reached and transformed in a generation in kind of Jesus, we need to think like that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's certainly linked to that, I guess, sometimes even how we measure success of our youth ministry or our youth work. Because actually, if we see that as a how many young people are in church or now who are in a small group or, you know, if we if we measure it in terms of numbers and how many young people are engaging in program. Um, or our activities, then certainly maybe, yeah, as you're talking with Chris, maybe we don't push into the missional stuff all the time because that doesn't always um, result in numbers. And actually it might mean that those young people who we've engaged with at our car park end up going to the church up the road. <laughs> and actually, are we okay with that? Or did we do that with an intention or hope that actually maybe they would join us and our church? Um, so there is something, I guess, maybe even in how we measure success and how we talk about that within our ministry that again presents a challenge, I think, um, to, to us as individuals and as the church. Um, but certainly I think if we are only talking about mission in terms of the trip that our young people go on in the summer for two weeks um, and that we aren't seeing mission as a huge part of our discipleship, then again, as you guys have said, I think we're, we're missing out on a huge part of our discipleship, really, aren't we? Yeah. Great. 
Okay. Number five. <laughs> it's been quite a journey so far, guys. Good work. <laughs> um, yeah, our last question um, then um, to round off our little series. Um, if this is something that we are seriously thinking about um, in our youth ministry, our children's ministry within our church, um, what is the first thing that we need to do? Where do we start? What's, what's our thing to do? Um, Catherine, can I come to you first again? <laughs> Yeah, um, I suppose the the first things we're going to do is we're going to we're going to pray, um, prayer walk our prayer walk our towns, um, ask ask God, um, who, who are those young people that uh, where you're already at work in their lives and where you're waiting for for us to be to be part of this, um, to have that sort of awareness of your of your local community and of of where young people are. Maybe if you prayer walk at different times of the day, you'll discover you'll discover where they are at different times of the day and, and where you might might have those opportunities to walk with young people. Yeah, Chris? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, get busy praying. I would say get busy gathering people who want the same thing. Um, start in your own church. Start with the leadership. Frankly, if they're not keen, then start looking in, within your church. Find some passionate people in your congregation who want to get involved. Um, look outside your church, find, you know, if we're thinking kingdom, if we're thinking young people reach for Jesus, then who else, who are the best kingdom people in, in the town who want to get on board with some kind of initiative that's going to step outside um, and start gathering people together to pray and then to move. Um, I'd always want to try and involve young people. So, you know, our young leaders, our young Christians, um, again, if we want to shape them as disciples, who so think missionally, then or is there a way that we can get some of these guys involved with their peers? Um, and then just get out there. Yeah. I don't let fear, um, don't let fear stop you. And and I would even say if maybe if you're in a place that you're struggling to get permission or you're struggling to get people excited about mission, then think about ways that you can do that um safely without having to go through lots of those hurdles. So for example, there's nothing to stop you walking down the street at, at bus stop time and saying hello to people. That doesn't require approval. Um, and maybe we need to start somewhere something that you can do, uh, rather than maybe can't dwelling on the things that we can't do um, and just start. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I, th I think I've probably nothing else to add apart from what you guys have said, actually just getting over the fear, you know, what's the worst that could happen when I go for a walk down the street and pray and if I happen to see young people, families at the school gate and I say, how can I pray for you this week? Um, actually, what's the worst that can happen? Then say, no, I don't believe it. You're all right. Thanks. You know, okay. Maybe it didn't my pride, but actually... I, I get on with it, you know, actually just looking for those places where God is already at work, as we've talked about, um, and actually where he's asking us to join in. Um, and yeah, praying, what, what better place to start? Um, so yeah, getting out there, being aware of what's going on in the community, walking into the local coffee shop when you're out on your prayer walk, getting a coffee, saying, we're on a prayer walk, how can I pray for you as we go? How can I pray for the local businesses? Um, but yeah, looking for what God's already up to. Yeah, brilliant. And people are welcome to have a conversation with us. Um, yeah, we're excited to be able to offer um, a little bit of a conversation for anyone who is thinking this through, for churches who want to explore what mission might look like and what it looks like to reach out. Um, Catherine and Chris and myself are all willing to have conversations um, and to journey with you in this. So we are gonna try and gather people um, some evening and we will release a date to come. <laughs> um, and yeah, we, we wanna journey this and actually ask God what he wants us to be doing in our local communities right now in this season as we look out. Um, so yeah, if you are interested, please keep an eye out for that um, and get in touch with us. We would love to journey some of this stuff with you. Um, and Chris is more than happy on a Friday night to come and do some detached, aren't you, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> what else would you love to be doing on a Friday right. evening? <laughs> Amazing. Guys, thank you so much for joining us this week as we've journeyed this. Um, and as I've said, there will be more conversations to come. So, yeah, we're really excited for what God is up to. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Bye. Thanks, Dan. Bye. <laughs>